What are your future plans for all your businesses? Oh, you know, um, just always continually uh, pushing the envelope. We have a contest on the show going on called the Red Pill Contest, where we're really, you know, opening the boundaries. Like I don't care if you're signed or not. We just want to find dope talent. Luckily, the internet. It's, it's brought us two things, good and bad. You know, the good is it's a, a lot more music, which, right. you know, you get a lot more. Your artists are able to discover, be discovered, no matter if you're in Iceland or wherever. If you're dope, like, people will find out about right. you. You don't have to find an A&R. You don't even have to be signed anymore now. And then the same, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff out there, so it's tougher. You get a lot more stuff that you have to search for. Right. But we always want to be putting on who's next. We don't care about, like, you know, I'm always anti... I'm always like do it yourself, anti right. major establishments in business. So that's that's kind of my mentality. So we're we keep pushing independently, taking over the world one day at a time and hopefully providing a platform for all these great artists, whether they're signed or not, it doesn't even matter. This is where I get emotion. Right? How do you find balance in your hectic schedule schedule between work and family? Because yeah. I will sit here and tell you as an OG, I had no balance. And that's why I'm not married, I have no children. How do you find that? Because I did it until my mother passed away. It's, it's a great point, and you know, it's it's tough, and I didn't really realize the importance till you know, really a couple of years ago. I'd say even too, like I went on that, and then I, I, I was lucky I actually listened to, to people like yourself who who've been through that. It's there's no right answer, but there's a great quote that somebody said where it's like, look, you know, nobody's ever gonna go to their grave saying, man, I wish I put more hours in the office in my life. It's, it's not about that. I do. I say, luckily, I never work. You know, every every day that I do for fun, but same time and even to be more successful you have to take steps away and focus and let things go and you know find that time you have to, to make it happen it's tough and you have to you're gonna lose different opportunities but you know sometimes you have to realize that life is more important than, than working it's so tough there's no right answer I'm not very good at it but right you know. look we're both Caucasian and I don't judge the color no skin or the race or religion but you're from Minneapolis yep. and for me Minneapolis is the Timberwolves the Vikings, and I love when I see you doing that type of stuff, but the Mall of America, you know. Um, how did you become the number one hip-hop DJ in L.A.? Oh, man, it's crazy. Like, how did this happen, man? It's funny. Everybody thinks it's Minneapolis. When I grew up there, it was the, the murder capital of the, in the entire U.S. 612 was the murder capital of the U.S.A.? It was. There was a, 612, remember, correct? Yep, exactly. Okay. I remember there was an article on... Uh, on Mark in one of those magazines and said like Murderapolis that was where we had the highest murder rate of, of anywhere and the station I started off was a little there's no hip hop station it was a little community station in the middle of north Minneapolis one of the worst hoods and I, I did a 4 a.m. show that was my first show my first show DJing on the radio Saturday like late nights nobody was listening but like you know I remember walking through that and you know uh, so I was able to you know I really saw and you know always the, the street hip hop is what I've always been a fan of always like the gangster rap this, and that that's what was was going on, and I saw so many different things, and it always struck a passion with me. And the people that I really, you know, got known for are, you know, were experts in that game within all that. So, but you know, it's something that I naturally always listened to. I've been around all those circumstances, even though I never, by any stretch of the imagination, gang banged or did anything like that. But I saw that that growing up, I witnessed that in my my high school. You know, I remember. I saw shooting on the school bus as a kid and stuff, and so I was around those elements and did see the, see those things. So it was very familiar with me. So it's, I was never scared of that. And like when I walked into LA and was in Compton with Game and in his hood, like it's the you know it's the similar elements no matter where you're at. So I was able to kind of walk between that. And you know when we did all those mixtapes, like that was the that was the heart of it. But I was always you know I mean there's such such a deep message, a powerful message, and a message of what's wrong with the world and a lot of that and a lot of that music. So it's always just been, you know, stuck out to me. So, so I got one last question, yes, right? Sir. What's the craziest thing you ever witnessed in this hip hop music industry? Because I've witnessed a lot of stuff. I just want to know a guy like you, craziest. what do you, what do you see the, the craziest thing? You know? Um, the craziest stuff was, I'd say, you know, that for me it was the time, and there's two reasons for this. Was when like the game 50 stuff was going on and 300 bars A because 300 bars is really what I was DJing before I started this right. I came out here ended up working on the business side of things which was great still DJing but hadn't blown up on the DJ side yet so that at that moment when I produced 300 bars that's when my world changed and because it's tough to make it as a DJ and get your, your name out exactly. there and that was kind of like my platform so A being you know 
for me that was like wow I'm being shifted from behind the scenes to being in front of the scenes so that was a, a massive thing and it was something that I was, always knew would happen um, with, with my DJ career and I took advantage of it there. and then the other thing is just the reality of all that situations the craziness right. the drama the real things that were going on between those two and seeing what was happening behind the scenes that alone was crazy enough but then you add in the fact that my life was changing from being this behind the scenes industry guy to being somebody in the, in the public eye and, and seeing so two crazy transitions and, and things happening at that right. time so I'd say I'd say that for me personally right I was trying to you know do something special for you I'm just working on it but um no worries um so you know it was funny right because now I'm, in, I'm interviewing you yeah. and you would never expect that right yeah. um I want you to ask me one question oh man now I'm just gonna give you my full history real quick so you know okay I'm from Queens, mm -hmm. and I never I forget where I come history. from. No, I'm just going to throw some things out there. MOP, Beat Nuts. Okay, I didn't know MOP. MOP, Beat Nuts, 36 Mafia, The Loonies, Mac Mall, so really A-Ball and MJG, system. Fat Joe, Pun. Pun used to be Fat Joe's hype man, but then Steve signed him. Pun used to drive around in the van. Run DMC, Jam Master J, The Nipsies, The Sean Kings, and The Eyes, The Mans. The Bone. Yeah. You love Bone Thugs, and I've been in 20 room years. Ever. Easy. Yeah, Ask me a question. Biggest. Let's see. Well, there's so many. I'm, if it's one question, let me think of the right one. Cause I want to make. I want to get my money's worth. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Steve, what? Let's see. What was the biggest mistake you made in your career? Great question. Cause I want to learn from. So my, I don't make the my, same my, one as my I My biggest play. mistake was um, not having balance. Um, and I have my priorities straight when it came to family, a loved one, female, because I got so caught up in the music industry. And then, you know, obviously Jam Master J died in Easy E and and, and, and and Pun. And you know, I worked with the Outlaws and I was around Pop, but I just wanted to keep their name alive. Especially Jay. Any any of you I do. I always say I give it up to Jam Master J who put me in the game, but I got just so caught up in trying to keep the legacies alive, and I didn't have the balance, you know? Right, Thank you for, uh, for, for paving the way yeah. and giving the advice. I was trying to get Tim on the phone, you know? Ah, you know, I was trying to get Tim guy. on the phone, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get him. I just wanted to, oh, no see, because, you know, he changes his numbers so much, but yeah, he always does. I don't even know if I have any latest numbers on the guy, because, let me see if he picks up this number. Because I just thought that that would be special because I used to go to the record store. You're from Minnesota. You know what the he's record the, is, Urban Lights. People don't crazy. know these things. And Hello? Tim! Bell, what's See? I'm sitting here with somebody and we're just vibing and, 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 and I, I just love doing different things. I'm interviewing this man and this gentleman said you gave him a start. And I'm, I'm sitting here with Ski. <laughs> what up? <laughs> What's good, sir? How are you? Man, I can't call it. Just out here working with Chris Lawrence back here. That's it. Exactly. I told him I was playing your new song on the radio, and I told him how when I was 16, walking over from Central, you were the first person to ever give me a shot, and then you connected me with Ah oh, No, put me on the radio, and all that. So, giving it up. Yeah, he used to come get his record, pull records from me, and all that. Like yeah, it's so funny, Tim, because I'm interviewing him, but I'm talking Minnesota, and I'm like, hold on, man, we're going to talk retail record stores. He's like, you know Tim? I'm like, yes. But I'm getting stuff out of Ski that people might not know because these record stores are not around no more. And I told them, we're friends through my mentor, Jam Master J, you know? Crazy. So, you know, I just wanted to call you. Small world, man. Everything good, Tim? Small world. Yeah. Everything good, man. You just, you know, 20 years of the store. So we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of that. And then, you know, like I said, we, we, get a, we feel like we might be able to hold on with this Chris Lawrence thing. Uh, the Del Brackett. KG, Naughty by Nature, they're great friends. Wow, Tim, so I'm going to come, when I come out there, um, we're going to catch up, but I appreciate you picking up the call, you still got me stored. Oh my God, yes, sir. And, I'll, probably, um, I'll, be All I'll be out there for All Star. Okay, yeah, we definitely got to get the other ski for sure. Done. Yeah, that's ski talking. All right, so beautiful, man. God bless you, man. Tim's number love, rest in peace, Jam Master J, and that's funny, yes. see? You would never expect that you, Tim, Tim, right? Yes. Urban Lights music, we used to come out there, so <laughs> God bless, Tim, okay? I appreciate you guys. My, uh, my brother. See, it's just a small world, but a lot of people don't know these things that we know about that. This is DJ Ski, and right now you are tuned into live with Steve LaBelle.